So I've had quite a few people ask me what editing and rendering is like on the brand new M1 Apple MacBook Air. So I thought I would just do a very quick video to show you the speed and performance when using two programs specifically, and that is DaVinci Resolve and also Adobe Premiere Pro. Now I have edited on the previous versions of the MacBook and I wasn't too impressed. It only really works well if you spend extra and get the more premium models. I've never really had much success on the base models, and this one here is a base model. So what we'll do first is we'll import some footage and we'll also open up Resolve. So we'll open up Resolve. While it's opening up, I have some 4K footage on this little Samsung T5 SSD. Now this is from the camera I'm actually shooting on right now, which is a Sony A7 Mark III. And it's a full frame camera shooting in full 4K, 25 FPS and also about 100 megabits per second bitrate. So we'll plug in the T5 SSD. And what we'll actually do first is we'll drag some of this 4K footage onto the desktop of the Mac. So you can see how quickly it transfers. So bear in mind, this is an SSD, it's very quick. And the Mac also has internal storage that is very quick. So if we drag this footage onto the desktop, See, it's about two and a half gigabytes and it does it in under five seconds. Close that down. And we'll make a new project. We'll call this M1 Mac Test. Create. And first things first, we'll import the test footage. There we go. And we'll drag this into the media pool and we'll change so that Resolve mimics the settings. And then we'll come into the timeline. We'll select all of it and drag it onto the timeline. And fingers crossed, this will just play. So I'll make this a little bit smaller. And that is playing very well there's almost no delay actually there is no delay it's just playing it as you normally would now if we try scrubbing works perfectly absolutely no delay now again this is full 4k footage however if we come down here into the project settings resolve always seems to default to a 1080p timeline resolution. So if we change this to 4K, which is here, Ultra HD, and video monitoring, we'll also change that to 4K, which is Ultra HD here. Save. Now this is playing in full native 4K. And as you can see, that is working very well. And if we scrub, it is playing back perfectly. There's absolutely no delay, there's no lag. That is playing without any issues, which is very surprising to me because this is, again, a base model Mac. It cost about a thousand US dollars. And this is playing footage that sometimes even my main PC computer would struggle with. And if we test this out, it's not hot at all. It's not even warm. It's completely cool to the touch. Whereas my old MacBook Pro would be a furnace right now and you could pretty much cook an egg off it. So what we'll do is we'll do a test render. So we'll use just the default YouTube 4K settings. And I'll also do this on Premiere Pro as well. So we'll add to render queue. Uh, we'll call that, and we'll save the desktop and we will render. So that is going very quickly. You can see there it's almost at 10% done. Now I don't have any effects on this yet. I'll come back and put an effect on after it 
renders. I'll just do some very basic color corrections so you can see how that works. But what I'll do now is I'll use the magic of editing to fast forward to the end of the render. And you can see the render has finished in one minute and 41 seconds, which is very impressive considering that this is, let's have a look here, over a minute of 4K footage. So you're gonna be getting about three to four minutes to render 1K of 4K footage on here. And again, it is completely cool to the touch. It's a little bit warm here, nothing uncomfortable, nothing too crazy, you can barely notice it. Over here, it's completely cool which is absolutely insane performance for a, a laptop as cheap as this and as small as this. So now if we come back into the timeline and we're gonna to go to color correction, we're just gonna add on just some random curve changes and some random gamma and gain changes. And we're not color correcting it, we're really just putting on the color correction to see if there's a performance hit in the timeline. So we'll give these clips a couple of random color changes and we'll go give it some gamma get some gain and some offset take out some of the hue put in some saturation again i'm not doing anything professionally here it's just absolutely random just to see if it has any kind of effect and then we'll leave that there for now and if we go back to the timeline Again, remember this is playing in full native 4K and there's absolutely no issues there. And then if we scrub through the footage with effects, zero issues at all. That scrubs perfectly fine. Okay, now we're going to exit out of Resolve, I'm not gonna save that one. And we're gonna try out Premiere Pro. Now again, I might as well just mention while we're waiting for this to load, neither of these editing programs are optimized at all for the ARM chips, so the M1 Apple chips. They're all sort of still based on the x86 architecture, which is mainly for the Windows chips that Apple used to use. So just bear that in mind while you're watching this video. After the next couple of weeks, both of these developers, so DaVinci and also Adobe, are gonna be optimizing these programs to work with the new ARM chips. So if we go new project, I'm just gonna call this test M1. Yep, I'm gonna go okay. And we're going to import all the 4K footage, and we'll just shove it straight into the timeline. There we go. Now let's see if this plays. And it seems to be playing perfectly. So if we do some timeline scrubbing, very, very responsive, no issues. I think it's about the same as DaVinci Resolve, but it's very, very smooth and you don't really notice any kind of delay. I could very easily edit on this. There's really no difference at all compared to Resolve. Okay, so let's add on some color. And we'll add some curves. Again, don't pay any attention to my color correction skills. It's really just for the purpose of this video, just to shove something on there to see if it plays. And as you can see, that plays very, very well. Now what we might also do is we'll actually add some Gaussian blur because that is usually quite resource intensive. So Gaussian blur, there we go, we'll drag that on. 
go effect controls and Gaussian blur blurriness zero. Let's drag that up to 50% and then we will play. And that is pretty amazing. Scrub's fine. Let's get to some motion so you can have a bit of a better look. That is playing absolutely fine. Now bear in mind, this is color corrected, horribly color corrected, I might add. And also it has a Gaussian blur effect and this is playing in real time. So this is absolutely insane. From such a small laptop, it's so cheap. Now, if we go to export this clip, I will take off the Lumetri color and Gaussian blur. So it's just a stock. And if we go export media, now I did the DaVinci Resolve clip in QuickTime from memory. So I'm actually gonna do this one in MP4. Again, I'm not trying to compare between Premiere Pro and Resolve in this video. It's really just to see if this laptop will work with the various editing programs and what kind of performance you can get out of it. If you wanna see a comparison between all the different editing programs, there are other videos out there, but this video is not it. So we'll go MPEG4 and so we'll actually go H264 and we'll go to YouTube 2160p 4K Ultra HD. Now this is again just the default Adobe setting and we'll export. And you can see this is just about on par with the Premiere Pro, about two to three minutes or so, maybe a little bit more. Again, not trying to compare between the two programs, but as you can see here, this is several minutes of 4K footage and it is rendering perfectly fine. No fans, no heat. Doesn't seem like there's any kind of thermal throttling. It almost feels like the M1 chip is just barely doing anything. It's like it's on a holiday at the beach at the moment. And again, this is 4K full frame footage at 100 megabits per second. And this machine is having absolutely no issues with it. Now, just while this is rendering, I'll also show you a screenshot that I got when I was installing Adobe Premiere Pro. So as you can see here, it actually comes up with an error message when you install it. And it says, you are on an Apple Silicon device. While we develop a new version of this app for Apple Silicon, you can use the Intel-based version on your device. So the crazy part is that this particular version of Premiere Pro I'm using is actually made for an x86-based Windows or in, sorry Intel-based chip, not the Apple M1 chip. And it is still working extremely well. So that's pretty insane. And you can see here the render has actually just finished. So if we go into the documents, Adobe Premiere Pro, here it is. And that has rendered out perfectly. Very, very impressive. Anyway, that's it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I know it wasn't the most well-designed video, but this is just something I wanted to put together very quickly, just in case you're looking to buy one of these laptops now, because there really aren't any videos out there like this one. So if you did enjoy this, make sure you subscribe. I'll be making much more in-depth and advanced videos on this subject on my channel. So make sure you subscribe and stay tuned, and I will catch you in the next one.